So now that we're starting to build with objects, we're able to do something called association. And we get two new terms, uh, composition and aggregation. And so let's look at, say, that homework assignment that we had last week. We designed a Pokemon class. Now, Pokemon by itself is, all right, they're wild and everything, uh, but it was a single object. What happens if I start to want to flesh that out? I want to make Pokemon red or blue or fuchsia, whatever the colors are nowadays. Well, let's think about this for a second. We have a main character. We have what's known as a trainer. And any one trainer, any one trainer can own one to six Pokemon. One to six Pokemon. Because that trainer is owning a specific Pokemon, you know, two people can't own the same Pikachu or Bulbasaur or whatever, uh, this is known as composition. One object owns six Pokemon. One object owns uh, another object, or owns instances of another object. Well, then we've got aggregation. If we think about Pokemon again, Pokemon have uh, a large set of moves. Uh, the game has a large set of moves that all kind of have their own little tweaks and uh, nuances to them. You know, uh, Electroshock uh, is a thunder type. Uh, it has a base power of, I don't know, 30. And, you know, it does a few different things. But any kind of Pokemon can have that. Well, any kind of Pokemon can have that. Uh, for example, Pikachu could have it, or Raichu, or Zapdos, or some other electric type could have this electroshock move. This is where aggregation comes into play, is that any one Pokemon can have a move, have one to four moves, but it doesn't necessarily own that move. Uh, so let's start to flush that out. Let's think about object, uh, our, our move object again just so we can kind of see that a little in action. What's this one mean? What does this uh, slide kind of give us? Well, it's, okay, if we look at it for a second, uh, if we review back, we look at sort of our context clues. This filled in triangle right here, this is telling me that I have a composition. I have a single object owning instances of another object. Then we've got the empty uh, diamond. This one is saying that I have one object uh, aggregating another object, uh, having a relationship between an object but not necessarily owning it. Well, in this case, if we look at it, any one person can have a relationship that we call supervisor with another person. So we could have inside of the person class, say another person, supervisor equals new person. That's all that kind of means. So we just have inside of a person class another person. Now, okay, so let's get back to Pokemon for a second. Let's think about that, that Pikachu. Here's Pikachu. Pikachu is a Pokemon. It's in electric type. It has a name called Pikachu, uh, electric type. You know, H HP is 10 or 12 or whatever. You know, we have this. Well, we also say that this Pikachu has four moves because, again, any one Pokemon can have one to four moves. One to four moves. So we say that po Pikachu has quick attack, slam, Electro Ball and Thunder Smash. All right, pretty simplistic what's going on there. Well, if we think again how we looked at the homework assignment in the past, uh, here's a little abbreviated version of that. What we did was we made an array of strings. We made an array of strings for the attacks known, the moves Pikachu knows. Uh, so this was just a string, this was just a string, just as a string. This was just a string. And then when we had some objects like add move and remove move, we just said that those were going to accept a string parameter again. So how can we flesh this out? Well, what happens if instead of 
move just being some string array, what if we turned it into its own object? We went out and we made a move.java file. Well, what we can do is we can expand on that. So suddenly I go and I make that move.java file. And I still have Pokemon, and I'm not going to try and uh, do the little check mark on my po Pokemon just in case you know the computer I'm using is not uh, you know savvy to the times uh, and it can't handle Unicode characters but you can see that suddenly I have one class I have Pokemon inside of its class I have attacks known and inside there I say it has an array of move objects guess what I create new moves. I create uh, move electro ball or you know move uh, m1 equals new move and then inside there you know I, I skipped over putting the constructor in here just to save up on space but I could have its name so slam I could have its attack power so you know 30 I can have its a type as well electric electric there we are. Now I can do that with every single one of po uh, Pikachu's moves. And so now I have a little bit more control. So when I look at something like my damage formula, I can get the base attack. I can get this attack power for any given move. And so suddenly we have, you know, say this one is 30, quick attack, it's quick, but it's not really powerful, so it only does about 15 damage. Electro Ball, that all right, Electro Ball, we'll say that that's about 30 as well. It's an electric style. This is a physical style. Physical, electric. And then, you know, we got that Thunder Smash. Well, that sounds very powerful. And so uses up a lot of Pikachu's energy, but it does 75 damage. Ugh. That's a very powerful move. So this is how we can start to have an association with our classes.